Stranger Things, the secret CIA programs that inspired hit series, breaking down how the Duffer Brothers used real-life government programs like MK Ultra and the Stargate Project in their hit show. This is at RollingStone.com, and it's written by Katie Drell. The hit Netflix series Stranger Things was clearly influenced by Steven Spielberg and Stephen King, with a heaping helping of X-Files and Twin Peaks thrown in for good measure. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Matt and Ross Duffer, the brothers behind the show, mentioned some of this inspiration. As ridiculous as it is, the monster in the alternate dimension does not come from a spiritual domain, and it's not connected to any religion. It made it scarier. I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe in aliens in alternate dimensions. Government-funded drug experiments. When Chief Hopper tracks down Terry Ives, the woman who attempted to sue the government for abuse after what happened to her at Hawkins, he and Ives' sister talked about Project MK Ultra. Though it sounds like what conspiracy theorists' wet dreams are made of, MK Ultra was a real government program, funded by the CIA, that went from the 50s to the early 70s. It tested countless subjects at over 80 institutions, many of which were fronts funded by the government, and filtered to schools, private hospitals, and even a couple jails. Most of the documents relating to the project were destroyed by the CIA in 1973, because of course they were. But what we know comes from the witness testimony, a couple congressional investigations, and a cache of 20,000 incorrectly filed budgetary documents found during a Freedom of Information Act requested in 1977. It's enough to paint a terrifying picture of, wide, of a wide-ranging government project that sought to capitalize on mind control techniques that could theoretically be used against enemies during the Cold War. Of particular interest to the government were the drugs that could be used to extract sensitive information, especially acid. Researchers tried to see if hallucinogens had the power to control minds, erase memories, or even work as a truth serum. It's hard to know exactly how far-reaching the experiments were, or who knew about them. Even some of the researchers involved had no idea they were participating in a government-funded project. But the transcript of the 1977 Select Committee on Intelligence is a fascinating read. And not only for the reference to the MK Ultra subproject that studied magicians' arts as applied to covert ops, were any of these experiments performed on women who did not know they were pregnant? Did those pregnancies then yield psychokinetic children that could be used as secret government weapons? For some reason, that does not appear in the transcript, so let's rule that as a solid maybe. When not being used to coerce testimony out of suspected terrorists at government black sites, sensory deprivation can be a relaxing and meditative experience probably happening at a spa near you. In Stranger Things, sensory deprivation tanks are used to trigger Eleven's powers to help her listen in on faraway conversations and sneak up on the monster from the upside down. In real life, they mostly trigger hallucinations. First invented in the 50s by neuroscientist and dolphin enthusiast John C. Lilly. The isolation tank, like the saltwater kiddie pool seen on the show, was developed as a means of sensory deprivation. Lily was nice enough to test it on himself first, but sensory deprivation did not stay nice for long. While working on a subproject of MK Ultra, psychiatrist Dr. Donald Ewan Cameron used a combination of hallucinatory drugs like acid, electroshock therapy, and sensory deprivation on unwitting patients, many of whom came in for things as innocuous as treatment for anxiety. Though it's not clear whether he was using a tank or some other form of sensory deprivation like earplugs and blindfolds, some of the patients who underwent his experiments ended up permanently comatose. 
that has not stopped sensory deprivation's proliferation or use by the government, nor has the long-standing debate over whether it constitutes torture. Sure, Project MK Ultra gets the shout-out in Stranger Things, but the tests on Eleven's abilities actually seem to harken back to something called Stargate Project. After all, MK Ultra was supposedly over by the 1983 setting of the show. Supposedly. But Stargate was just getting warmed up. Funded by the U.S. Army, the project aimed to research paranormal phenomena that could be of use to the military. Including but not limited to psychokinesis, moving things with your mind, mind reading, and remote viewings of events and conversations, like when Eleven listens in on a Russian man's conversation. The government even hired a psychic headhunter to recruit candidates. The 2004 book-turned-movie The Men Who Stare at Goats is about the Stargate experiments that tested telekinetic ability by having men do just what the title suggests, moving things with your mind, in an attempt to kill the animals with their mind. Eleven is part of a similar experiment at Hawkins' lab when she's asked to kill a cat by staring at it, though that's much less funny than goats for some reason. Let's check out this reading at msn.com, entitled 13 Chilling Facts About MK Ultra, the government mind control experiments that partially inspired Stranger Things. Though the Dumbo Gorgons and their fellow inhabitants of the Upside Down pose the most immediate threat to the heroes of Stranger Things, Papa's willingness to use children as his personal lab rats, as well as the government and military powers happy to back him up, is the more chilling one. While the actual Department of Energy released a statement following the release of the show's first season to point out that they are neither evil nor forcing telekinetic children to crush cans of new coke with their minds, series creators, the Duffer Brothers, told Rolling Stone that they were inspired by the very real series of CIA mind control experiments known as MK Ultra. Matt Duffer said, quote, we wanted the supernatural element to be grounded in science. MK Ultra began in 1953, and its creator, chemist Sidney Gottlieb, only admitted that its end goal of human mind control was an impossibility two decades later. When he left the CIA in 1973, he attempted to destroy all evidence of his activities. But due to the efforts of whistleblowers, and an incomplete job of historical erasure on, on Gottlieb's part. We now know more about this dark period of American history than the CIA ever intended. While the experiments themselves seem like something lifted from science fiction, they were all too real. An experimenter's disregard for the humanity of their test subjects ruined lives and destroyed minds. Here are 13 haunting facts about MKUltra. Let's start from the last one. Number 13. O'Neill told the BBC that the horrors of MK Ultra were exposed due to the efforts of John Marks, a whistleblower who wrote a book entitled The Search for the Manchurian Candidate. He explained, quote, There were congressional hearings here in the U.S. in the mid-70s after it was exposed. And during those hearings, the CIA finally admitted that this program existed. They admitted that it was probably not the right thing to do, but they feigned innocence. Count down to number 12. Another brainwashing method used at the Allen Memorial Institute was Page Russell Electroshop Therapy, which Julie Tenney, the daughter of a survivor, described to the BBC as approximately 40 to 75 times the strength of a normal shock treatment. Yeah, when they first started doing those shock treatments, they were very powerful. Now they're like microcurrents. Not back then. She added, so it's really designed to wipe out the memory. Tenney said that after her father was subjected to 27 days of paid Russell shock treatments, those in charge of the experiment were discouraged because he still had ties to his former life and that he was asking to see his wife. Tenney went on. 
They desired to give him more paid dressel shock treatments and put him to sleep for another 30 days. Number 11. The Allen Memorial Institute, a psychiatric hospital in Montreal, Canada, played host to some particularly gruesome experiments, overseen by the psychiatrist Dr. Donald Ewan Cameron. According to the BBC, Dr. Cameron's goal was de-patterning, in which patients would be reduced to an infantile psychological state, subsequently allowing doctors to rebuild their minds as they saw fit. At least that's what they thought. They never succeeded in rebuilding a single mind. Lana Sochuk, whose father was admitted to the Allen Memorial Institute for asthma treatment, told the BBC he was also put in an insulin coma for 36 days, with a recording beside him saying that your mother hates you over and over. This sort of conditioning was known as, quote unquote, psychic driving. Number 10. As horrifying as the experiments that happened on American soil were, even more cruel were those that took place abroad. Kinzer told NPR, quote, Gottlieb and the CIA established secret detention centers throughout Europe, East Asia, particularly in Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. End quote. As these locations were largely under American control during the early 1950s. Gottlieb and his co-conspirators were not burdened by legal entanglements. Kinzer said, quote, CIA agents would grab these people, anyone considered expendable, including enemy agents, and throw them into cells, and then test all kinds of not just drug potions, but other techniques like electroshock, extremes of temperature, sensory deprivation, all the meantime bombarding them with questions, trying to see if they could break down resistance and find a way to destroy the human ego. Number nine, one particularly absurd and chilling aspect of the experiments was called Operation Midnight Climax, in which sex workers brought potential test subjects into a safe house where they would be dosed with acid and secretly observed by CIA agents. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, Gottlieb hired George White to run experiments on guests at one of two safe houses in New York City's Greenwich Village. White then moved to San Francisco to establish the headquarters of Operation Midnight Climax in Telegraph Hill. At the apartment, White hid behind a two-way mirror and drank martinis as he watched his victims and their reactions to both the drugs and the attention of the sex workers. The sex workers who participated in these experiments did so at least in part in exchange for favors, such as being freed from imprisonment. In 1973, Gottlieb left the CIA after Director Richard Helms was removed by President Richard Nixon. On their way out, Gottlieb and Helms did their best to destroy evidence of MKUltra, Kinzer told NPR. Once Helms was gone, it was just a matter of time until Gottlieb would be too. And most important was that Helms was really the only person at the CIA who had any idea of what Gottlieb had been doing. Gottlieb actually drove out to the CIA Records Center and ordered the archives to destroy boxes full of MKUltra records. However, however, some records remained despite their efforts at a cover-up.